Well, before I introduce our guests, let's take a look at a trailer for a unique film that represents a vision of theirs fulfilled. This is the country where there is the biggest gap between what I thought about it and what I saw in reality. You have here a mixture of 104 different communities, different languages, mentality, and culture. The original promise, a remarkable story about a remarkable place. This is the story of the 3,000 years old nation which is called Israel. A journey in search of an answer. Our reality is different. Can the promise be kept? In Israel, we're surrounded by countries that want to make us disappear. And yet the greatest challenge comes not from outside. Israel's facing a demographic crisis. The greatest challenge lies within. Arab citizens are producing babies faster than Jewish citizens. And there'll be an Arab majority in this country. And uh, a full democracy means everybody gets a vote. The promise of an Israeli democracy. We know our roots. We believe in that. The promise of a Jewish state. We are in our promised land, the only land for the Jewish people. But can both survive? If you want to be democratic and the Arabs are going to be the majority here, it's going to be the end of the Jewish state as we know it. My firm belief is that everything starts in the economy. If you do not achieve the economic integration within the Arab sector, you can do whatever you want politically. You will not achieve your goal because people at the end want to wake up in the morning and say, I have it good. A barren, inhospitable land where the earth offered little. Israel has no uh, oil but grains. It's the truth. We have to uh, exploit what we have, and what we have is our knowledge and creativity. A country searching for new ways to survive. The freedom of this land is not by war, it's not by arguing. We have to be open-minded and we have to be able to share. But still relying on the old ways. Everybody in Israel got to go to the army. Every little kid that you see in the street is about to be a soldier. I want to serve. And I think it's important to be a mother for a daughter that's going to, to the war or something. Of course I'm afraid. The original promise. We asked the questions, are you prepared for the answers? The rest of the world sees us as a cause of a problem, as the armpit of the world. As, as some place where people ride on camels and shoot each other. If you believe only one thing... I think this is the price you have to pay when you have a democracy. Believe this, you'll never see Israel the same way again. That is the original promise. Well, we're joined now by the co-executive producers of this unique documentary film, The Original Promise. With us is Doug Coy of Doug Coy Productions in Vancouver, BC. He's a longtime media professional and served as the primetime TV host of Online on Joy TV 10 there for almost five years. And also we have Bill Eney, whose background is in corporate management, franchising, and real estate development. So they came together in an unusual partnership, a Christian and a Jew, to launch this unique film project about Israel, exploring a, a nation of modern people in an ancient land and Doug and Bill welcome to 100 Huntley Street. Thank you Ron. Great to have you with us and what a, a fascinating uh, film just from the the trailer there to it just draws you in you what you want to see the rest of it because there's a there's a lot of misconceptions really uh, about Israel but Doug let's start with you um, you also co-host the uh, the film itself and uh, well, why a film on Israel for you? Well it's kind of interesting I mean I, I co-host with a young lady her name is Farah Abiba she's an actress she was raised in Kelowna, uh, and she was Jewish, but was embarrassed to be Jew, you know, to, to let people know that she was Jewish. And uh, so, you know, she wanted to have a discovery to reconnect with Israel and with her land. And so that was her motivation for going over. My motivation for going over uh, had to do with my dad. My dad uh, was passing away at the age of 91, been in the ministry for 70 years as a minister and uh, all his life wanted to go to Israel. Members of his family in, in Holland had actually uh, hid Jews and, and helped in that process. And uh, literally on his deathbed, he said, uh, Doug, don't wait. You know, 
It'll, it'll go by. Life goes by. You have to go to Israel as a Christian. You need to go there and experience it. Well, doing the talk show also, I would introduce and have people on that were from Israel and were trying to discuss issues. And one day one fellow looked at me and he says, you know, really, if you're going to discuss Israel, you need to experience Israel. Little did I know, keeping a promise to my father that I would go, three months after he passed away, I was in Israel. It was kind of a miraculous thing that happened. I I'd had no idea that would be the case. And what I experienced there, uh, what I perceived Israel to be, you know, a dangerous place, and looking over my shoulder and is somebody going to blow up, uh, wasn't like that at all. It was this modern, te technically put together country, mm -hmm. democratic country with shared values. And, you know, I just, I got so into the people. The people were amazing, you know, and I just, I, I fell in love with Israel. So that's, uh, I came back, I said, uh, to a guy on a bus, and I said, uh, somebody needs to do something to give Israel a little bit different light in, in right. you know, the way things are going. And he looked at me and he said, his name was Paul Michaels, he looked over at me and he said, you do it. <laughs> and that started it off. And Pass the buck. There, there, there you go. we go. And so then we'll, we'll figure out how this connection came together in a minute, but, but Bill, give us a little bit of your background. I understand you were born in Iraq. Yes, I was born in Baghdad, and uh, through many generations we had lived there. In 1952, uh, the borders were opened and we were allowed to leave. We had to leave. So th there was a, a group of uh, Iraqi Jews then that, that were living right there in Baghdad? and very large community of okay. Jews, a very established community for many, many years. 